Do you want to fight with love? Love, dude. Love. You want to fight? Love. Do you know what we do need to talk about, though? What's up, man? The Conjuring 3. It definitely made me do it. Is that a, is that a good way to talk about this movie? Dude, my goodness. My, here's my thoughts. Ready? Is there a... Far, oh, hold on. Stupid thing is blocking my my way of looking. Here's my thoughts. What? The studio made me do it. Ooh. This shit. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. Just j- right off the back, I actually fast forward through some of it because I'm like, this is just dragging on. It's crazy how boring this this movie was. Yes. For what they were doing, it's crazy how boring it was. Yes. This- so many people have been saying that this is a superhero film, and I was I've been so confused by that until I watched it. I get it. I don't get that. Explain. They they have gone so far away from the 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 sp- space of realism that now it's all fiction. Yeah. Like that, Conjuring One, very realistic. Very contained in one very location. Very contained. Dude. It's yeah. just one the the self contained in one house things are the, are always the ones that will always work for me. Yeah. Uh, they'll never not work. Also, Conjuring 2, they still keep it a little low-key. They have multiple families involved, and it's in England, so there's a little bit of a switch up there. But it's still about a case that's famous, something that they actually did, and and it works, right? Yeah. The and Conjuring 3 well, is a court drama with deem- with, a, with a main villain. Yeah, it's a, weird. A main, a main human villain that's like... Throwing Satan at them, and they've got to go pew pew and block Satan. That's what it felt like to me. Yeah, it, like it felt Doctor Strange to me in a way. Well, dude, like, or I, if you were, I guess, to equate a superhero. Sorry, go ahead. Well, no, I, I rewatched Conjuring Two today, and I'm like, okay, this isn't landing as well as it did, right? But it's because, like you said, it does kind of deviate from the centralized location and yeah. it introduces more of like a fan- fantastical thing like with two demons one looks very fucking cgi and the other one's just like uh okay like really weird right i think of certain things at the first conjuring i remember first the rating right the rating stuck out to us because yep. it was our only for horror only yep. for terror and sure that was a gimmick but it worked uh also i remember the uh the times where what are they called the warrens the yeah. warren family were able to debunk things yeah say this isn't real this isn't real they have stopped doing that yep. anything is plausible to them they're like this guy just beheaded somebody but he said he saw a ghoul and they're like we should go look for that ghoul. <laughs> and it's you don't want to know anything else you don't have any other questions do, do, do that again is he trustworthy is there anything else to it here you be the reporter so so you be the reporter and we're the warrens so so i'm walking in oh, oh, am, am i on television oh hello oh hi Oh, I'm reg- why am I here? Am I interviewing you? I'm a, I'm the Warren. Okay. Hello. Some dude just got beheaded. Oh, uh, officer, who are you? Officer Jenkins. Oh, ho- hello, Officer Jenkins. How can I help you? Uh, yeah, this kid just beheaded this dude. Oh, stabbed no. him 22 times. What? Why? Because he's a psychopath. A psychopath? But there's a- is there anything else? Yeah, you know what? He oh said that God. he saw the what devil. What is that behind you? But like, What is that behind you? Run! Run! <laughs> That's what that movie was like. That's what it felt like to me. They do. We lost a lot of people on that one. Boom. Jeff's the three. That's not even spoiling anything, dude. We didn't spoil anything. At oh, all. I don't care. If you guys are mad that we're spoiling this, I'm very sorry. But this is The Conjuring 3, directed by the same director that did The Curse of La Llorona. Here, here's the thing. I feel bad for the director because I, I don't. No, this his, guy his, knew better. His short film. Well, here, I think he's hired by Warner Brothers. So did Warner Brothers. They director. knew better than to give him this. I just, it's a money grab. This franchise became a money grab the second they deviated away from the Warrens. Mm, because the third movie feels park. like, well, the a third movie, right? Well, the third, well, the, the, what do you call it? The side off, spin offs, or whatever, they have like a formula to them. And it's just mm-hmm. like, okay, these are just to fill in the, the space while they get to the Conjuring movies, right? Yeah. But they applied that same formula to the third movie, and it does not feel like a Conjuring movie in that sense. Like it feels like a spin off of a Conjuring movie about Conjuring main people. Hmm. Fuck the writing, dude. I was mad. Oh, it was pretty awful. And I, I have to say, they they missed the mark as far as characters, who they are inherently, and 
what what any source of like motivation is for for where they're going. If anything, it's, it felt like kind of a swan song to the Warrens, and they were trying to be like, let's let's give these guys the the best ending we can to these two people because didn't they both pass away at this point? Like the actual people. This is great for our podcast listeners. Thank you. Yes, they did pass away. I just wanted my drink. Oh, uh, yeah. We're not supposed to draw attention to the drink. Dude. The, the, the drink. I wanted my drink. Yeah. All right. Well, let's continue on with this. So let's let's talk about what was your favorite conjuring of the three, first of all. First one. First one. Okay. I like the first one a lot too. The second one I've watched more times weirdly enough. And that kind of is the case with me. I don't know why I do this, but I always have one that I'm like, the, that's the one. Right. And I watched the sequel more. <laughs> <laughs> like, I love the Avengers, the first Avengers. I watched Age of Ultron more than the first. That's embarrassing. It's a little... You, you shouldn't admit but, that. But I'm not saying that it's worse. I, I agree that it's worse. But I watch it for the pain. I don't know. Here's the thing, though. Um, the second Conjuring, I think, has a lot of better technical aspects to it. Mm -hmm. For example, when James Wan directed again, yes, not in the second one. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That's what the third one's missing, dude. It's a James Wan touch because he has there's a, thing a little the bit at the movements. beginning. There, there's some camera work that they try to echo James Wan, yeah. especially when it came to like doing the walkthroughs of the house with the very like fish eye lens. Yeah, that's very James Wan. That's very Aquaman, right. like the fighting scenes and stuff. But the, but the second movie, dude, the, the thing that I love the most is like when they're trying to talk to the old dude, Bill, you know, mm -hmm. Oh, and and it's one, Beale. it's a single shot of Patrick Wilson. And in the background, out of, out of focus, it's the little girl, but you see her grow mm -hmm. into this old man out of focus. We don't know what he looks like, right? Necessarily. Yeah. And it's just this three minute conversation or whatever of him talking to this guy while he's looking away. Right. It's just, yeah. I want to know how they pull that off. Like, Here's the other problem with oh. this. I, I ain't afraid of no person when it comes to a ghoul show. You know, if this is a possession movie, I'm not afraid of any person. And and this woman, you know, and that sounded sexist. I'm not meaning just. I shouldn't have said it like that. It sounded horrible. Yeah, re rephrase it. Rephrase yeah, it. This this kind this kind lady this kind satanist. <laughs> she's a satanist, and I'm apologizing for sounding sexist. That's weird. But the she's crazy. Bitch, she's dude. not. She's not interesting. No. She and the lighting in this film is so dark, so dark that during all of those scenes where you're supposed to be afraid, it's tough to even see what you're supposed to be afraid of. Until the big like music comes in and goes bang boom and you oh okay I guess this is happening. It's the same problem with Curse of La Llorona. Everything is so dimmed down and anytime it's going into the scary parts, you feel like you've walked into a spook alley. Right. And it's not necessarily a good one. Right. Well, I know I like the positive thing I liked about this movie mm -hmm. are the sequences and how surreal they felt. And I'm like, I felt like that could have been the third conjuring touch, right? Because the second one feels just a little bit different than the first one, right? Mm -hmm. But they deviate so far away from it. Like the surrealism was just like, it felt so misplaced because it was trying to be a slow burn horror film when it really didn't need to pick up its fucking pace. Yeah. I don't know. What would you do? Because here's the thing. I don't like shitting on these movies without offering up like my yeah, own opinion yeah, right. of how you could fix it. Right. Right. So where would you start? Would you start in the story? Would you start in um, like, do you think the story's good? The writing just needs to be tuned up. Do you think this became more about the Warrens than the actual haunt itself, which is my main, main issue. I feel like if they focused on the family, like the first one did, right. The first one mm -hmm. set that up really well. The second one more or less touched on it, but kind of focused more on the demons. The third one is so far away from the main haunt and the main family. I forgot about the little kid by the end. Yeah, the fact I forgot about like one of the main possessions is like, um, that's you know, not it a freaks good thing me out. I, I will give it a compliment. Uh, I have a like, I already have a fear of prison. If you put a demon in prison, that's like that's a, that's way above the line. I'm not cool with that, and that's uh, that's good. Yeah. I like that a lot. Okay, speaking of Satanism, what if they just stuck to that? What if it was just a prisoner, right? Just a prisoner. And they're like, medically, we have no idea what's wrong with them. Somebody that's their relative was like, will you do us a favor? It's my brother. I need I need you to. And then it turns out he's possessed. And they have to figure out how to do. And he's an evil person, too. And they don't want to try to fix him. But at the same time, they have to. 
like so there's conflict between them whether they should do it or not and then in the end they'll realize that they have to still help people because people inherently could and then the wardens love each other in the end and they end up dying for this person that they have no clue who they are and they don't deserve redemption well maybe that could work because here's the thing there's a Satanist in prison in California that's been making the news too. Mm. He recently beheaded. What? I know. Like, okay, I, know, what? I, I followed along with that too quickly. Back <laughs> up. What? Yeah, there's a Satanist prisoner in California. Okay. Who he's been on record saying he has no remorse for whatever. I mean, he has murdered countless people. Okay. Mm. He beheaded his. Put, get that finger out of my face. He beheaded his <laughs> roommate. He beheaded his roommate. He did. Get to the wide as we're doing this. He beheaded his roommate mm. and the guard while well, they're doing lineups and stuff. But anyways, he beheaded him and the guard found the body and he's like, what the fuck? And then the guy threw blood on him. Like, you know, like the power of Christ compels you kind mm. of a thing. And he fucking did nasty stuff with the body, but nobody knows why he's like, he's a full on psychopath. Mm-hmm. But what if he is possessed? Cause he's a Satanist. Mm. Remember that Here's guy? The thing. I don't Netflix? believe in any of that, well, and I'm glad that at the end of this movie, spoiler alert, neither did the judge. I love, I love how you phrase it. When, I, when we first walked in, you're like, "Did you watch The Conjuring?" And I was like, "Yeah," you know. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> we're like, "You're like, what about that ending?" Ooh. <laughs> Dude, the funniest part about this movie to me was when they were doing those <laughs> after credit title pop ups. Because they, they were teeing this up really quickly to be a not guilty thing. But then the thing came up and it's like... He's found guilty. Yeah, they, they said it in so many words. But to me, it kind of read like, and of course, because this is fiction and there's no way that they would approve these two idiots to be actual, like, factual people to give evidence by saying that he was possessed. Yeah, yeah that worked. Not. And then, he served five years for well, manslaughter. And yeah. I just laughed my ass off. I was like, this whole movie was pointless. Half of this did not <laughs> even happen. I doubt the I the only thing that I think probably happened was there was a murder. Like that's it. And then they were like, but what if there's a cave and some tunnels and there's like an altar? And that pissed me off too. You know when what? when the first Warren gets to the altar, just knock all the stuff off. Why are you trying to lift the five ton altar? You're a frail woman. You don't know piss me off, dude. What the cliff scene? Mm. When she's oh, that edge. was interesting. I liked when it like snapped into day. Right, that, that's cool. But then all of a sudden, there's a fucking ghost hand that like grabs her ankle, and I'm like, they're, they're telling like, me a demon's hanging off the side of a cliff to grab you. See, that's are the you thing. kidding me? Same with the waterbed. It's like. I like the There's bit, no though. surprise to it. There isn't a surprise. The minute you know someone walks into an empty room, some shit's going to go down. Yeah. It became very James Wan did a very good job of surprising us. Yeah. Like, because in the first movie, for example, the wardrobe, he sets that... I mean, the scene where you see the demon on top of the wardrobe, right? Like, on upon a rewatch, you're like, okay, that's a spooky scene. Like, it's it was effective the first time. It's, it's mm-hmm. not as effective as the second time. But what makes it so effective the first time is the way he sets up the wardrobe with the clapping... And then you think there's going to be something inside the wardrobe and he tilts up at the yeah. last second. And then you're like, is there something on there? And then it does like a quick cut and a zoom, right? Like, yeah, oh, dude, there's no passion in this. That's it's what it's missing, grab, man. It just didn't feel like there was any passion. It felt like even, even the actors were like, I don't know where this goes. You're wrong. Like it's I'm in a court drama, but I'm possessed. It's passion of the Satan. But a, this does make me think that a prison possession movie would be really dope like what if a demon just infected a whole block <laughs> that'd be insane and what if the wardens have to be locked in with them what if the wardens is actually and then the priest has to be the one it the prison priest is the one that is like that'd be crazy well here's the thing dude i, I want, like that i wonder you, if they did a face. movie that focused purely on the warrens where Ay-ya-ya! it's more about them than it is about the possession. Cause this is what this movie kind of became, but it's not how it marketed. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like that, that alone feels like a side thing. Cause the conjuring should be about the haunt itself and the families, mm-hmm. not the fucking people investigating. Yeah. I'll give you that. Boom. That's my hot take. Is that a hot take? Uh, well, what is your rating? Then we'll consider it a hot take. <sighs> Two out of five. Two out of five. Uh, hmm. Yeah, just because I don't even have the energy to give it any to even <laughs> consider it being higher than that. So I'll just go with you. Okay. Ugh, what a disaster. 